Let's see the breakfast in Pulse TV Africa. We had this great tour second conversation, and this is a development that we need to talk about. The fact that you have the Afeni Fair uh, throwing their support uh, to Peter Albi, the Labour Party, for um, you know the elections ahead of 2023. A bit of a background to all of this. Ayo Adebajo, a leader of the Afeni Fair, a pan Yoruba social political organization has thrown his weight behind, you want to say her weight, uh, behind Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Adeba Jaw said that Obi uh, has the ability to rule independently and would not disappoint Nigerians if he wins the 2023 presidential elections. I mean, that's a lot of trust and that's a lot of hope on one person. He also said that... Uh, he has lost confidence in Bola Tunubu, All Progressive Congress, APC flag bearer, and Atiku Abubakar, candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Adeba Ajo said that Tunubu sold President Mohamed Buhari to Nigerians in 2015, adding that he would give continuity to incompetence if elected. It is only Peter Obi that can rule independently without the influence of these criminals in government. In his words, Tunubu will only give continuity to Buhari's incompetence. Emphasis has been made, and he said, we know Peter Obi very well, and that's why we endorse him. He will not disappoint Nigerians, and let's put uh, tribal difference apart and vote the right leader in. Well, this morning, to make sense of all of this, uh, we have Boyega Adejumo, who joins the conversation this morning. His uh, a traditional title holder and a native of Ibadan. Thank you so much, uh, Boyega Adejumo. It's good to be back here. All right, so let's get straight to it. What, what do you really make of this endorsement of the Afeni Ferry? I'm a chieftain of the Afeni Ferry. I am a member of the National Caucus of Afeni Ferry. And that is, of course, the highest policy body of the Afeni Ferry. And in addition to that, I'm a member of the National Executive of the Afeni Ferry, and only nine of us who run the Afeni Ferry as an organization. And uh, make no mistake, Afeni Ferry is a social political organization that has, over the time, 71 years, uh, given birth to the Action Group, the UPN, the AD. So we are very comfortable with our position, which has come out of a whole lot of experience in Nigerian political matters, which has come from a deep interrogation of the present political situation, and which has come from our appreciate knowledge that has always made us to stand on a high moral ground. And anywhere we stand is where the Yoruba, nay, the whole of Nigeria, has always or have always come to meet us. When we said that the Babangida transition was going nowhere in 1986, it was exactly so. In fact, let me even take it back to when General Gowon uh, tried to do the non-party election and Papa Olawa said it's going nowhere. And we all know what happened to that exercise. We know what happened to Babangida's June 12. And again, when we said that Buari was not going to give us anything good because he had nothing to offer, we said exactly everything that was going to happen in Buari's rule, and it has come to pass. So... Afeni Ferry is not an amorphous group of all comers. It's a group tailored after the sage and the scribe Papa Awolowo. In his wisdom and his books that he has written and in his methods that he has given to us, we have looked at the 
political situation and rejected the 1999 constitution. And we said again that there should be no election until this structure is changed. We were at the forefront of restructuring right from 1953. We achieved it with the Littleton Constitution of 1954. And we have carried on. We were the one that made the 2014 confab happen. And that was why we supported President Jonathan. And look at what has happened today to those who supported Buhari. Now it is happening again. And people are dressed in, in obscene gaps. Those who brought Nigeria to his knees, those who have divided us, those who have made Nigeria ungovernable through Boko Haram and terror. And those are the people that are parading themselves as the candidates for the 2023 election. So Afeni Ferry says there should be no election. That's our stand. But again, if you are even going to say there must be election, then there must be equity. There must be the high moral ground. There must be justice. We have had eight years of Obasanjo in Yoruba, man. We have had 11 years of the, of the North, three years of Yoradua and eight years of Buari. And we have had five years of the South-South. And... If it is coming to the south, the only region or the only zone in the south that has not had it is the southeast. Based on equity, on justice, on fairness, it should go to the southeast. If at all, there should be an election. And that is our stand. But again, in examining Peter Obi and in interrogating Peter Obi and having to have had the opportunity to deeply anticipate and bring to the fore the issues that confront this country, namely the structure, and knowing fully well that we cannot continue this way, namely the wastage in, in government and, and, and the bad governance, we believe that if at all there should be an election, the only person that is capable of putting this country right back on track is Peter Obi, and we stand by that assertion. Well, um, so you have said uh, a lot in this time that we do have. Uh, the question is that, why should there be no elections? You're saying that the position of the Afeni Fair is that there should be no elections in 2023. And why should there be no elections? There shouldn't be an election because the 1999 constitution is a fraud. And right there at the beginning of the 1999 uh, political dispensation, Afeni Fair said it clearly to its governors then, the six governors of the Southwest and the representatives of the National Assembly, that this constitution is unworkable. In fact, Afeni Fede then charged the governors and the representatives not to show up in Abuja, to show that we abhor this particular document that is so fraudulent, that is so skewed towards a part of the country, that absolutely arrogates power to the center and gives nothing to the state that does not permit uh, 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 police to be established, even in the local government, let alone the states. And knowing fully well that it is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious uh, 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 nation or country, as it were, this constitution was not going to work. We said so. And then, of course, the leader of Afeni Ferry, Papadi Banjo, went to Okuta Panel and said to the whole world that if you do not change this constitution, if you do not do something about this constitution, if you don't change this structure, this country will not survive the next 20 years. And we have seen the words of the old man, he's 94 now, when he said that that was when Okuta Panel was put in place by President Ambassador. And President Ambassador, in his wisdom there, 
took heed to what Afeni Ferry said and started the process of amending, changing, or whatever he wanted to do with the Constitution. The only thing that went wrong with the upper soldier approach was the fact that the third term agenda was inserted into it, and that's cut to that effort of a master just. Then came uh, 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 Jonathan, because Jaradra was there for three years. So he, well, he wasn't so well disposed to doing exactly what is just to this unworkable document. But Jonathan listened to us, and, and he gave the job of putting together the 2014 confab to Dr. Okromu, the foremost attorney very leader, and then when the process started, he made Professor Balaji Akemi, another attorney uh, very uh, uh, leader, a co-chair of the exercise to, to make sure that this obnoxious document is jettisoned and something new is given to Nigeria. And that was what brought about the 2014 confab. So, has Afeni Ferry not been proven right? Is this constitution workable? Do we have light? Do we have security? Do we have that cohesion? Are we not divided? Um, and, and we have seen legislators on the floor of the house say to Nigerians that the problem is the constitution. Ade, Ade Juma, Ade Juma, do, uh, I, I'm, I'm, let's even talk about this. Let's even, you know, go with your... Um, thoughts and all that the Afeni Ferry, like you have stated, stand for. The document is not working. The Constitution, and you have said that efforts has been made, and you know, the 2014 document is as a result of the efforts from the Afeni Ferry. But, don't you think that this is undemocratic of the Afeni Ferry to be asking that there be no elections in 2023? It is like a coup. I mean, why would you say this is a democratic dispensation? Where has the FNF been prior to, you know, 2022? What efforts has been made? We know that there's a constitution review process that's been going on. I mean, how come we haven't really, um, you know, felt or had, just as you said that uh, it happened in 2014, that there should be a review of the constitution to the letter to ensure that maybe the interests of Nigerians are reflected. The answer is very simple. If you do, if you are doing something and you keep doing something and it's not working, then something to tell you that something fundamental is wrong with your approach. Then you better change. You better find something else to do. If we have been talking about this constitution for so long and everybody knows that Nigeria is in serious trouble, the economy is actually in serious trouble, as we speak. Every zone of this nation is experiencing a war of sorts. And of course, we all know that the deep and very divisive influence of terror, of, of prebendalism, of nepotism, is actually eating away the fabric upon which uh, we can say there had been some cohesion in the past, but there's nothing but binding so it, us it, again other than the fact that Nigeria remains, just like Papa Wolowo said, a mere geographical expression. Where is that sense of belonging that anybody has to this so, so nation Chief right Adejuma, now? So, Chief Adejuma, do you think that this so, is a so, reason so, why so the election will, should not so hold, I, that I, the Afeni Ferry should be asking that the election should not hold? No, I, I, I'm coming to that. When the British were ruling us, we, we had a constitution in 1946, which was a unitary constitution. They didn't call any Nigerian into it, and Papaolo and, and, and the rest of them, even the Igbo nation, they all protested. The British didn't just do like this present government. They didn't do like those who have a sense of entitlement. They changed that constitution in 1949. They took the man who designed that constitution in 1946 away and brought another person and they brought another constitution. The 1949 constitution was a whole lot better. But we still demanded, the Afghani then still demanded in 1951 and 1952 for a better constitution. And then we had the London Conference of 1953 and a new constitution was enacted, was brought into force in 1954. 
And then again, we still had another constitution in 1959, and then the final one in 1963 that even allowed for local government police. The point I'm making is this. In nine years, we had four different constitutions. Nine years. In which case, there are people who had their heads screwed on right and knew that there was something wrong with the constitution and they changed, they gave us four different constitutions in nine years. Why are we holding on to this constitution that is not working? And it is only democratic to demand for something that is going to be workable for the people. In which case, what is the government there for? The government is there to protect the people. The government is there to, to, to make sure that the people live in dignity. It is the job of government to give the people suffer, to provide for them, to make them have a sense of belonging. And we are saying this constitution does not provide any of such. So it is only democratic that Afeni Fede should demand that we should have a new constitution, not even a patched constitution, not even an amended constitution. America, with all their, their wisdom, in 247 years, have only amended their constitution eight times. In which case, amending constitution is even difficult. But being able to bring out a new constitution is the easiest, most desirable aspect of, 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 of nationhood. And in 1963, what happened was very simple. Well, Chief Adejumwa, I, I, I want to ask you. So, so my question would remain, and I'm not sure that you've answered that question, that in all of this, is this a reason that... Um, the Afeni Ferry would say that an election should not hold in 2023. That's where you stand. That's on the one hand. Is that a reason? Because it's, uh, you know, it's not different from Why saying that as a coup. Have an election this is, th this is, this is a democratic foundation. dispensation. And if you say that there should be no elections in 2023, it's as good as saying that it's a coup, that, you know, the Afeni Ferry, it's, it's, it's more or less, uh, more or less um, uh, a not military you know, organization or not military thanks, press thanks, that who's asking that there be a coup. That's number one. The on the other hand, again. on the other hand, aren't, can I, aren't we all tired of having the same... But is that the way to go? The question is that the way to go? Because usually, I'm no, I know that you're very conversant with this phrase that two rights can never make a wrong. And so if you, we know that the Constitution is not inclusive, it does not include the, the thoughts of Nigerians, it's not that Nigerians came together and say, hey, we the people, and that's it. So let's even say that's a valid point. But asking that there be no election, is that the way forward? Truncating a democratic, because if you say there be no elections, it truncates, it, 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 it would truncate uh, you know, a democratic process. That's on the one hand. And what has the Fenifery done? Let's talk about not 2015 now, but if you would like to say from 2015 to 2019 and up until 2022 to ensure that the constitution has been reviewed. So uh, that's also on, on, on the other hand. So we're having two issues now, but I'll, I'll just let you react I to this have, before I get to, about to another this constitution that is like a tire that has so, suffered maybe a, hun a hundred punctures. And then you still take the same tire back to the organizer and say, oh, I've had another flat tire again. Please patch this tire a hundred and one time. Now, is that exactly something that is meaningful? Does that actually make sense? Why don't you just go and procure a brand new tire? This constitution, even if you decide to patch it a hundred and one times, is not going to be a workable document. It is bad in its entirety. So what have you done to ensure that the document else. is and, not and, bad? And, and, you're, you're, not a, you're not allowing me to explain and to answer your question. And I'm coming back to the idea that we shouldn't have that election until the constitution is changed. And I would like you to please listen. We are not saying that, oh, there shouldn't be an election ever. No. What we are saying is, before you have your next election, change the constitution. And it is only the right thing to do. Somebody wrote, and he did an analysis, that the next election is going to cost about six trillion naira. 
Where is the money coming from? Can Nigeria afford that? You, you, you saw what happened with people buying presidential forms for a hundred million naira. Yet we had a structure, we had a constitution in those days. Our law who ruled the Western region from Ikeja, Yaba, Ikorodu, and the rest of them here in Lagos to Asaba. All he needed to do was put himself forward in his native Ikene and become a member of the House of Assembly. He didn't have to go for an election in which he would have to spend 10 billion naira. He didn't have to campaign all over the whole of the Western region. All he needed to do was convince his constituency in provincial Ikene that is the one to represent you people. And then, of course, they will get to parliament, and then they will choose the leader. Very, very safe. It wasn't, it wasn't costing so much money. It wasn't costing so much rank. It wasn't making a mockery of democracy like this one is making a mockery of democracy. It wasn't breeding corruption. Now you want somebody to pay $100 million for, for, for a form, and then go ahead and spend maybe uh, how many billions? for presidential election. And you don't want him to get his money back from the system. But, but, but that's not stated by the Constitution. I mean, it's not a function, you know, that's not what the Constitution says. I'm not sure there's any way of the Constitution 1999 that stipulates that. But um, Everything is back to the Constitution. It is a system upon which this faulty constitution is based, it is the fact that this constitution stipulates all of this, and there are political parties derivable from this same party constitution who practice all of these things that tend to promote corruption that we have saying that it will not last, it is not sustainable. Okay, How but can Nigeria in dire straits, we are hardly being able to pay salaries, we have asked to, that is on strike for six months, they are asking for money. Every, every aspect of our lives, from, from medical to uh, e e economy, to education, to agriculture, is suffering for lack of funds. And yet, six trillion naira is going to be thrown into an election just to elect a president. And we think nothing is wrong with that. If we think nothing is wrong with that, then there's something fundamentally wrong with us. All right. And, I, uh, I, I, and, and it's a very simple matter. What we are running, this constitution and the structure, is a recipe for disaster. So let, like let's, not, let's get straight to the crux of the matter, Chief Adeba, uh, Adejumar now. Let's get straight to the crux of the matter. Um, you also are a part of the system, and so therefore you believe that... Uh, you know, the system is faulty. There's no reason for us to chunking all of that. But you also have, uh, you know, Adebajo, Ayo Adebajo, who's also saying that, uh, has thrown a support. It means that you also in support and every other person. The number one question for me here is, does this represent the interest of the geopolitical zone? We're talking about the Southwest now. It's the Afenifer is speaking for everyone. Does this mean that everyone in this region is throwing their support for Peter Obi? That's on the one hand. And if the constitution is not functional, it's really um, horrible, like you have described, and we should not even venture into it, then why then are you supporting Peter Obi? Good question. Um, again, I'll take you back to history. Since 1951, Afenifer has always represented the Yoruba. Papawolo was there for nine years, and everything he did is what has become the pride of the Yoruba today. The first in Africa television, the first in Africa stadium, the first in Africa skyscraper, the first in Africa industrial uh, uh, complex, the first in, the, in Africa uh, 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 modern estate. And we have all of that going for us. And then I think Akintola took over, and the same thing all over. And then the military came. Of course, nobody can own what the military is putting together as their own. So we cannot own, and we do not intend to own the military era. But as soon as the 
politics came back in 1979, it was Alephany all over again, free education. From the four cardinal programs of the 50s and 60s, we graduated with the eight cardinal programs during the time of the UPN. The same Alephany Ferry, we spoke for the Yoruba. And then again, in 1999, in all the six states, Alephany Ferry won. That was through the AD. But we now know what happened in 2003 the, the, and the way some people tried to destroy Afeni Ferry. But then Afeni Ferry has survived. No, Not only survived. Chief Adejuma, we have been, the, the we question have, here is... I'm coming, please. I'm, I'm coming, please. We have been the beacon, the compass upon which to judge and to see the progress of the people. And when we said, do not follow Buhari, and some people in Yoruba land, in the geopolitical zone, followed him. Have they not come back to accept our position? So, so why are you following Peter Obi now? And what we are saying, and what we are saying to them now, is exactly how their lives are being run. Are they happy with the way their lives are being run? Don't you see all the disasters that are befalling the great Yoruba nation? How do we bring ourselves back to the way we were? And we have the template, and we are telling our people this is the way to go. So why are you following and Peter Obi now? Why are you following? You don't believe that the Constitution is right? In now, now, now the reason why we are saying that if you don't want to listen to us and change this Constitution before the next election, and, you are, and the system is throwing up certain people, we cannot just fold our arms and watch the country sink further and further down into the abyss. So what do we have to do? From the pool of those that the system has thrown up, we have done our due diligence to find out who exactly can best represent the Afrikaner ethics, the Awolowa ethos, and the Omolua B post of the Yoruba, who can help bring us back to where we were, seemingly on the way to restructuring. Because without restructuring, forget it. This country will go bust. And we realize it is only Peter Obi that can do it. And, and we have proof. <laughs> is, it, is it Shetima, the man that even Modu Sharif said was the one who started Boko Haram. Is this Shetima that they found Sokoto, the man who bombed the church on 25th of, of, of December on Christmas Day in his governor's lodge? Is the man who claimed that, yes, we all created Boko Haram? Is that the man that Afeni Ferry should support? Are you saying that in our high moral ground, after the fact, you support a Muslim Muslim ticket. And so, then, are you saying that after 11 years of the North, we're talking of three years of Yaradua and eight years of Buari, the empire should go back to the North in the form of Atiku Abubakar? They said, Peter Abu doesn't give shishi. That is the man we want. We don't want anyone who is going to be bribing people. Who is going to go to any primaries and so, be so giving dollars, millions of dollars to people? If you are going to be buying people's conscience, then of course you will be free to do anything to them because they are slaves already. So it's the decision of uh, Chief Adejumo, it's the decision of the, um, you know, Afeni Ferry, reflecting or does it reflect the interests of the Southwest as a region? Or oh, it's just the interest of uh, Fanny Ferry. Ferry. Would you say you have nine persons? Fanny Ferry means life more abundant to the people. Fanny Ferry means the collective ambition, the collective future of the Southwest people. That is what we are working for. Did you see us in Jonathan's government? But, but Did Fanny it, it, Ferry serve as minister? Did we serve a special advisor? What we do is to think, is to bring ideas, is to devote our lives to giving the best to our people at any given time. And any time our people go outside of our advocacy, they meet with disaster, just like they did with Wari. And we are telling them again, this is the right way to go. 
So, so, so the question here is, you exist as a body, uh, not just anybody, not a social body, but social political. And my question here is, the decision of the FNA Ferry, does it reflect the interest of the zone? We're talking about the South or the region, now the, the, the Southwest region, the entire Southwest region, or just the interest of the group? Well, the answer to that is very, very, very simple, glaring. Everybody can see that they have monetized politics. Everybody can see that the Yoruba agenda has been derailed. But in 2017, Afeni Ferry put together what is called the Yoruba Summit Group, and we met in Ibadan. And APC, PDP, even the vice president, Stenjo Judu, all the governors were represented, and we all said the way to go is restructuring. And on that we stand. And that is what the Yoruba are clamoring for. And that is what Afeni Ferry has devoted his life to. And we have interrogated Peter Obi, and he says he's going to deliver on restructuring. And we are telling the people, this is the way we, to go. Now, there is always going to be that discussion. Are the people going to listen to us? Are they going to do our bidding? Or are they going to be taking 10,000 naira per vote and sell their future? The best we can do is to talk to our people just like I'm doing, just like Papa Debanjo is doing, the best we can do is to offer superior arguments, just like I'm doing, just like Papa Debanjo has done and other members of our territory are doing. If we like, let us get it wrong again, and then, of course, the consequences will be all upon us. It won't be the first time that it's going to happen. There was a Barabbas, there was a Jesus, and Pilate asks, who do I, who do I, who do I uh, uh, give unto you? Who do I release unto you people? The people chose Baraba, who was a thief. So what we are saying to the Yoruba people is, your future is more important than 10,000 naira they are going to give you on polling day. What we are saying to the Yoruba is, let there be justice. Let everybody, Christian, Muslim, feel a sense of belonging. No to Muslim, Muslim ticket. No to and yet another northern president. What we are saying to them is, based on equity and justice, the Igbo have never had it. But beyond that, there's a Peter Obi who ran Anambra and ran it well, who left 75 billion in the coffers when he left government. No other governor has been able to do that. He has demonstrated it. We have seen some other governors who left office and became billionaires. Based on what exactly? Based on stealing the people's money. So in all other these words... Things are, so, all so, these so, things so, are, matters, are matters of optics and intellection. So in and other words, the position of the FNF ferry does not reflect the interests of the South East or the Southwest. That they should follow the right path of justice, of fairness, of equity, and of standing on high moral ground. So you're just saying, in other words, that you, the position of the FNF ferry uh, doesn't reflect the interests of the people in the South. Uh, and I didn't West say region. that. I never said that. I, I said that we exasculate. We actually are the totality of the aspiration of the Yoruba people. That is what I but, said. But, but some people have said, also. No, it, is, it, is, it is, I said, it is on that that we exist to give the best to the Yoruba. In which case, we survive only because we want the Yoruba to have the very best, just like we used to have. And I will tell you something else. I used to consult for the World Bank. And as at 1962, the World Bank uh, 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 library has it that the group that the southwest region of Nigeria experienced as at 1962 was second to none in the whole of the world. We were ahead of Singapore, we were ahead of Thailand, we were ahead of Indonesia, we were ahead of every of those countries today that are several years ahead of us. Why are we in this 
situation in which we have found ourselves. We want to be back to that particular height when even the, the, the uh, 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 royal family of Saudi Arabia will come to Ibadan for medical services because we had such with us. All right, so... Um... And we want to replicate it again. But we can't do it with the present crop of people who are only about service to self. After any fair, it's about service to others. Chief, and Chief Adejumo. And such a time that everybody will simply imbibe this spirit, will believe in what we were given by our founding fathers, what legacy was bestowed to us by the late sage, we will not rest. Chief Adejumo. Yes, um, 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 let's even look at this now. I mean, because we, we need to look at different angles to all of this. Uh, the question here is now, uh, some people are saying that they are Fenifer, supported the uh, Jonathan's, you know, ambition in 2015. They also saw, you know, the support of Atiku at the time and they never made it. So what would become of, you know, the Peter being 2023 feels like, you know, it's really not going to be anything significant. But it's a good thing that you've made some clarity. Some of the points you've raised, I mean, very valid about, you know, the situation of things and uh, the current reality of the country. But on the other hand as well, we would also like to know what is the group doing, the FN Ferry, apart from the fact that you are speaking, you know, to Nigerians this morning via this platform, what are you doing to throw support to the Labour Party? We understand a lot of persons have said that as fantastic as Peter Obi candidacy is for 2023, you can't take that out. You need structures. Question, you need uh, you need structures I, I, to win the election. So what are you yeah. doing to support it? Let, In let, the let Southwest explain. region, oh, understanding me, that, you know, the Southeast well, alone let, cannot let me, win the elections. Let, let me tell you what we have done. In 2017, when we had the Badu Declaration, we called the South South, we called the South East, and we called the Middle Belt to come and see what we are doing. And that was the beginning of the formation of the Southern Middle Belt Forum, the SMBLF. Affinity is an integral part of SMBLF. And if you have been reading the communicate coming out of the SMBLF, you will see that the SMBLF demanded for a Southern president particularly of the Igbo extraction. So we are not alone. We have three other zones, and these zones are represented by the Ohanese in the Southeast, represented by the Middle Belt Forum in the Middle Belt, led by Dr. Kogu, Ohanese led by, Dr. by Professor Vyozo, and then Pandef of the South-South. We all meet. And I even belonged to the highest committee of that body, which is called the Working and Strategic Committee. So we have done our homework at even the SMBLF level. After I presented a paper to the SMBLF, that became the only uh, uh, item on the agenda at the last meeting we had in, in Abuja. And it was accepted and taken as the way forward for the SMBLF. So whatever Afeni Ferry is saying today is what the SMBLF too is saying. And we are talking about four zones out of the six zones of the Federation. So in which case we are not alone, that is one. Two, do not forget that the Labour Party uh, is, is, is coming out of the Labour Movement and the TUC. In which case, the Nigerian Labour Congress and the TUEC, they own the Labour Party. Do not forget that there are 170,000 polling units in Nigeria, and there should be at least three polling agents in each polling, unit, polling booth. And we are talking of no less than 510,000 uh, polling agents. And people are saying, oh, where is the structure? I am the structure, Afeni Ferry is the structure, SMBLF is the structure, Ohaneze is the structure, Nigerian Labour Congress is the structure, TUC is the structure, Middle Belt Forum is the structure, Andev is the structure. And then the teeming young Nigerians 
that are yearning for change, the end sasas are the structure, that they are going to man the polling booth, Chief they are going to vote en masse, and there's going to be we a revolution to in this country come 2023. We have to go. We're prompted to leave. I mean, I've enjoyed every bit of this conversation. But just a quick one in a few seconds, I'd like you to answer. You have mentioned that, you know, we, we can't go for the Muslim Muslim tickets. But we have seen a combination of President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemi Osibajo. Where does that leave us? I mean, what the combination of all of that, where has that really taken us to? So does it really matter whether it's a, a Muslim Muslim ticket or as a Muslim Christian or as a Christian Christian? What does it really matter at the end of the day? What, what, it match, what, what matters is actually making sure that the sensibilities of the people are respected. What matters is that you should respect people's feelings. What matters is that you shouldn't shove it down people's throat, what you will not accept. Those who are saying that, oh, Muslim, Muslim ticket is good, give, the, give them a Christian, Christian ticket that will be a jihad in this country. So why should you offer to someone what you will not accept yourself? It is demeaning, it is dehumanizing for anyone to throw at any, at any Nigerian today the way we are so divided, a Muslim Muslim ticket or a Christian Christian ticket. It is as simple as that. Tempers are high, people are angry. In fact, I was listening to one of the ministers who said, Oh, don't vote in anger. Oh, how do you want them to vote? You don't want them to vote in anger. How do you want them to vote? To vote with a smile on their faces because, 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 because petrol is scarce, because diesel is 800 naira per liter, because dollar is 630 naira to one, and then they should smile to the polling and say, oh, Nigeria is so great, and I'm going to vote for those who brought Nigeria down. From 197 naira to the dollar to 630. Of course, people are going to vote in anger. And people that are angry, you are, you are not going to compound their anger by insulting. Thank you so much, Chief uh, Boyega by, 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 by bringing we, we a Muslim, Muslim ticket on top of all that is happening. Thank you. Thank that you so much. Evil. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, it's been very interesting listening to you share your thoughts on all of this issue. And we do appreciate your time, Chief Boyega Ade Juma. We appreciate you. We look forward to sharing more of your thoughts. Uh, we have to go now because we need to make way for the news at 9 o'clock. And uh, Chief uh, Boyega, Adejumo is the traditional title of the Mogaji Ikoluba. Uh, he's from uh, Ibadan and is also a chieftain of the Fenifer organization. Uh, we've been speaking with him ahead of the looking at the 2023 elections and the support of the group for Pitaobi. Thank you once again. Thank you for having me. All right, then, that's the size of our conversation. It's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. And do not forget to get your PVC because it's your power to cast your vote in 2023.